neighborhood had a dream for a playground. Parents were confident their dreams could finally become a reality. That is until they ran into powerful politics at the highest level in the state. Tonight on News 13, the playground politics of Netherwood Park. I would like a playground because it just add more fun. I would like uh, monkey bars at the park. An innocent wish list from families in Northeast Albuquerque spiraled into a political battle. The playground politics are buried in this nearly $2 billion capital outlay bill. Among hundreds of community projects, you'll find this $200,000 request for Netherwood Park. Sabotage? So I think using a really specifically political privilege. She did use her, her privilege uh, to get what she wanted out of this deal. I think that's not an accurate um, perception of what went on. It's been a contentious debate adding a playground to the Netherwood Neighborhood Park between Indian School and I-40. Families first went to the city's Parks and Rec Department in 2021 to discuss adding the structure. Social cohesion, um, you know, I think there's research that shows how important focal areas such as a designated play area create for community cohesion. They could create the opportunities for our children to get to know others. But not every neighbor was on board. I have worked for years in early childhood and child development with all kinds of policy issues in early childhood. And I worked with the uh, various kinds of play areas and raise money for them. And what I know is the most creative way that kids play is on their own. They don't necessarily need a slide or a swing. She says she, along with some other neighbors living closest to the park, want to keep it this way. This is a very unique, open, unobstructed park, and it has been for 75 years. At a neighborhood meeting, other neighbors expressed concerns that a playground could create areas for bad elements to hang out or sleep. The bad elements that would come to the neighborhood, and I just... Like, I just want to voice the elephant in the room. Like, to me, that's coded language, that's exclusive language, that's racist language. To gauge support, some of the families went door to door and residents for and against the playground sent emails to the city. We asked how many they received, 61 for and 22 against. Two thirds of families eager for a playground at Netherwood Park. They were going to use that slope there with for climbing structure, you know, and it, okay. the structure was just going to be ropes, uh, a rope net, you know, and the kids could climb up and and uh, uh, this, there was going to be a slide down the slope. To make it happen, Senator Gerald Ortiz Pino requested $200,000 in capital outlay money. In the end, the pro playground group had the majority and the funding. They were ecstatic. They were closer to getting a playground. Then something strange happened. Lawmakers in Santa Fe approved funding for hundreds of projects, including more than 15 million to improve projects at Balloon Fiesta Park, 10 million for a film academy at the rail yards, and more than one and a half million dollars for the Bosque. The governor vetoed this one project in Bernalillo County. The senator's request of $200,000 for Netherwood Park. Nobody said, gee, Parks are great, but we don't want Netherwood Park to get any money. It was just out of nowhere, a bolt of, of, of lightning that, that left us all very shocked. Why would the governor look at this long list of multi-million dollar projects and pull out her veto pin for this playground? Remember the woman who opposed the playground? She's not an ordinary neighbor. That's former Lieutenant Governor and good friend of Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, Diane Dennish. So I spoke with the governor about this several weeks ago. Dennish tells me she called the governor and asked her to veto any funding for Netherwood Park. A normal citizen uh, can't just call up the governor and tell them their side. They, they weren't able to get that. You know, I don't think that's true. I think that's a misconception. Do you guys have the governor's cell phone? No, definitely not. Did any of you guys contact the governor about this? No. Did you feel that you had the opportunity no, no, to no, no, or even the need. But <laughs> why would she veto money for playing? Have you ever seen this where a citizen has been able to call up the governor and get capital outlay money vetoed? No. 
This is just a, a very peculiar attitude for somebody to take proprietary ownership of a public facility and to get away with it. That's the, that's the astounding thing. Because it's a public park, it should be based on public opinion. Neighbors accuse Denish of treating the park as her backyard. I don't apologize for having a lifetime of public service where I've known these people. I've worked hard for New Mexico and being able to call them and have a conversation about something that's important to me. I'm really more upset with the governor for not checking with, with me, with other people who might have known about this, but just taking the former lieutenant governor's word for this and vetoing it and killing $200,000 that could have been put to good use. And the special treatment didn't end there. Neighbors feel that Dennis had more access to the city, and they may have a point. We were there when the director of Parks and Rec, Dave Simon, hand-delivered city documents about the playground to Dennis's home. Would you deliver that to all the neighbors there? Yeah, so uh, Ms. Dennis requested those letters, and they're public record. If I request them, will you deliver them to me? If you would like to see all the letters, yes, God, I'd be, I'd be happy to give them to you. I, I would love to see them, yes. Yes, but do you see how this looks? You know, our decision was made right now um, to not move forward on this uh, play area right now for three reasons. The lack of uh, adequate consensus uh, for the project, the valid concerns about the project, and the lack of funding. I actually emailed Dave Simon and said, hey, I'm a planner, I'm a facilitator, I'd love to um, you know, offer my skills. I received nothing in return. Neighbors say it's clear they don't have equal access to city and state officials. The loudest voice or the voice that seems to have the most direct line of communication is getting the the response to that that's not representative of the community as a whole. I worked hard to get that position. I worked hard to be in a place where I had a public voice and I worked hard for many of the people that have been elected. It's just infuriating, honestly, and it's just sad. Our kids deserve a place to play. Orthizi Pino even changed the wording of the capital outlay request in case Netherwood decided against the playground, the money could go to other parks in the area. We asked the governor what was behind her veto. She declined to do an interview, but said based on her understanding, the playground lacked neighborhood consensus. In a follow-up inquiry, we asked her who she talked to about it. She would not say.